Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite designs. This is the Capriciously Chic Hat. This hat pattern combines simple fair isle and an all over cabled honeycomb pattern to create this striking look. Isn't this fantastic? You can use any two colors of yarn you wish. Maybe you wanna choose your favorite sports team or maybe just two colors that you absolutely love. Well, there are 24 colors of Red Hearts Chic Sheep by Marley Bird Yarn for you to choose from. This is Dragon Fruit and this is Sterling. These would make a really great pairing, I think. For this project, you need the free pattern, which is available over at redheart.com. I'll put a link to the pattern and the materials in the video description box right down there below. While you're down there, please smash that like button, as my kids say, to let other people know you enjoyed this video. Once you have your pattern and your materials, join me back here and I will show you everything you need to know to complete this really fantastic hat. With your pattern in hand and your yarn and needles ready, let's begin. This hat pattern is a lot of fun to make and we start down here with the brim. And you'll notice that the brim is a twisted rib brim. What that means is as I was working this one by one ribbing, every time I got to a knit stitch, I knit it through the back leg and it made those knit stitches nice and tight. I wanna show you what it looks like in a two by two ribbing so you can kind of see the difference. Right here is a two by two ribbed pattern that I've done and you'll notice the ribbing on this is a little bit looser and that's because I knit the stitches as you traditionally would. But up against the ribbing for this hat, it, which is nice and twisted, it just makes it a lot more elastic, a little bit snugger fit and I thought it looked really good next to the honeycomb pattern. Let's go ahead and cast on for the brim of this hat. And I want you to begin with a long tail cast on. The reason I like the long tail cast on is I feel like it gives a really nice secure edging to the hat body. So I want you to begin with the long tail. For the long tail cast on, you wanna make sure that you have a nice long tail to accommodate the number of stitches you will be casting on. You will find that number in the pattern which you have already downloaded. Once your tail is long enough, go ahead and place a slip knot in your yarn. Place the tail in the palm of your hand, take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Rotate your hand, go underneath the front loop and grab the back loop and pull that off. You now have a slip knot. You want to place that slip knot on the smaller of your two needles. This is a size 7 that I'm using. Go ahead, spread the slip knot apart to tighten it up. Now we will do the long tail cast on. You want the tail of the yarn over your thumb. You want the working yarn over your finger. And we've created sort of like a slingshot. We want to take our needle and starting at the palm of our thumb, we want to go up the thumb, swivel around to the tip of the finger, go down the finger, We've created this nice little window here, so we're gonna swing our needle through that window and let the yarn fall off the thumb. If you pull the tails apart, that will tighten that stitch up on your needle, and now we have two stitches. Let's do this again. Palm of your thumb, go up the thumb, swivel to the tip of the finger, go down the finger. You have this nice little window right there. I'm gonna take my needle through that window and then off my thumb and pull. Readjust and get back to my slingshot. Go ahead and cast on the number of stitches you need for your hat. As you get all of the stitches cast onto your needle, you will notice that they have gradually worked their way around the cable and they're starting to position themselves on the other needle. That is actually perfect. Now we wanna make sure that none of the stitches are twisted on our needle. If you place your 16 inch cable needle down, and you'll notice that by doing the long tail cast on, we have this nice edge right here that we have created. If we make sure that that edge is all on the inside here and it's not twisted around, this is what it looks like if it were twisted, okay? We don't want that. See how that is all twisted? We don't want that. We want all of that nice edge to be 
on the inside, just looking nice and lovely. Now we wanna go ahead and pick up our work to begin knitting. We wanna place the needle that doesn't have the working yarn come on, coming off of it into our left hand. So we go ahead, position that needle into our left hand, move the stitches up so that way they are ready to be worked. Notice nothing is twisted, right? Everything is still in the position it needed to be in. Make sure your tail is positioned out of the way. Bring the other needle into your right hand. So the needle that's in your right hand has the yarn attached to it. Now we can go ahead and begin knitting. And we start off by knitting through the back leg. And this is what's gonna give us our twisted rib. Every time we knit, we will knit through the back leg. When we purl, it'll be just like regular. This first stitch here is going to be a knit, but before I begin, I wanna place a stitch marker. And the stitch marker is just gonna let me know that that's the beginning of my row. I've placed my stitch marker, now I can start. I will go into this first stitch into the back leg of the stitch. See how I'm in the back leg? I take my yarn, wrap it around my needle just like I normally would, pop out of that stitch like I normally would, and then let that stitch jump off. Now I need to purl my next stitch, so I bring my yarn between my needles, and go ahead and purl the next stitch. Bring my yarn between my needles, and knit the next stitch through the back leg. Bring my yarn between my needles, and purl the next stitch. Between my needles, and through the back leg. You will continue this all the way around, and you will do this for a total of eight rounds. I wanna show you how I do this with my yarn in my other hand as well. For those of you who are continental knitters, it's the same action. I go through the back leg, and then I purl the next stitch. As you go along, just move the stitches up so that way they're ready to be worked and you will gradually work all the way around the ribbing and you'll be back to the starting point. You can't really see what the twisted stitches look right there, so let me go ahead and show you one that I've gotten started. And this one's a little bit larger than our original example because I wanted to have a little bit more of a substantial brim on this one. But you'll notice that by working through the back leg of those knit stitches, my knit stitch itself is nice and tight and twisted and I have a lot more elasticity right here in the brim. I'm to the point in my pattern that it's time for me to work the next few stitches and it's really easy to see what my next stitch is because it's in this column of twisted knits. So if I ever put this down and got lost, all I'd have to do is look for whatever the stitch is itself and I could just continue on. And each round that you work in this pattern, you will always twist the knits. You will always work them through the back leg to keep them nice and twisted. The pattern has you work this pattern for eight rounds, but as I mentioned, I'm making mine a little bit larger. So if you wanted to make yours a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, you absolutely could do that. Once you have finished your ribbing, go ahead and join me back here and we will jump into the pattern of the hat. How you feeling so far? Pretty good? It's nice to get that brim completed, right? It's uh, very gratifying. All right, now we're going to jump into the body of the hat. And this is where we will work cables and we will do some fair isle work. But first, we begin with only one color. Row one of this project has us work with color A, which is the color we have been working with so far. And we are just going to knit this entire round. By knitting this entire round, we're essentially separating the body of the hat from the brim of the hat. It makes it so that the colors don't leak in from the brim to the body. I thought it looked better that way. So that's why we start off with the full round of just knitting. 
Hey there, I need to jump in here for a second. I was editing this video and I realized I forgot to show you how to transfer over to a larger needle. It's important that on this very first round after your ribbing, you transfer to a larger needle. Now, in what you're about to see in just a couple minutes, I already transferred over to a larger needle, so I didn't show you, but I know it's important for you to learn how to do that. So just really quickly, I'm gonna show you how to do it on another example. So let's take a look. Here is an example of one by one ribbing that I'm using for a different hat pattern. And what I need you to do is when it's time to do this first round of just knitting, I want you to take your larger needle, so the other needle, and what you will do is instead of knitting with this needle in your right hand, you want to knit with this needle in your right hand. So you can go ahead and slip that marker and then knit this entire first round onto the new needle. This is the easiest way to transfer your stitches onto a larger needle, which is what you want for the entire round. Once this is complete, all of your stitches will be on this new needle and you can get rid of that needle. Okay, so now I'm gonna let you jump forward and you're gonna hear me tell you what to do for row one. <laughs> Thanks. As you are working this knit round, you are not going to twist those knit stitches anymore. You will simply knit the stitches just like you normally have in the past. Work this entire round of just knitting. When you get to the end of the round, we will then introduce a new color. I am coming up to the last few stitches of my round. There it is, it's the end of round one. I slip my marker over and I'm ready to begin round two. Round two is where we introduce a second color to our project. We are going to be working Fair Isle. Every four stitches, we will change colors. To do so, I will show you how to do Fair Isle holding one strand of yarn in each hand. That's right, I'm gonna hold one color in my left hand and I'm gonna hold my second color in my right hand. I wanna begin with a nice long tail to start off, okay? I don't wanna have a short tail that's gonna get sucked away. And I'm going to start. It has us begin with color A, and we start off by knitting two stitches. So knit one, knit two. Now I will knit with color B, so this is gonna be my sterling color, for four stitches. So there's one, make sure I don't knit with my tail, two, three, and four. Now you'll see in the pattern repeat, it says knit two stitches with color A again. One, two. Now, you will notice that it says repeat from star. And you might be thinking, wait, Marley, you said you're supposed to knit four stitches with each color. Well, if you notice, when we go back to star, it has to start off with two stitches with color A. And if we take a look at our work, ha ha, one, two, three, four stitches with color A. So I'm gonna work this entire round doing four stitches with color B and four stitches with color A. You'll notice I just keep the yarn in both hands and whenever it's time to knit with that color, I use that hand to wrap my yarn with that color. You'll also notice as I go along, I'm continually spreading out my stitches on this needle. The reason is, as I work across, you'll notice when I'm not working with color A or I'm not working with color B, that yarn floats behind the color I'm working with. Those floats don't have any give. So you wanna make sure that they are not super tight or you will put all of this work into this hat and nobody's gonna be able to wear it. So it's very important that you keep those floats with a little bit of loosey goosiness to them. That's why I like to space out my stitches a little bit just to make sure that the float is not getting too snug, okay? So as I come over here and I knit with this stitch, that yarn, I should say, see, there's my float right there. It's coming all the way from over here to over here. And I wanna make sure it's not super tight. So by spacing out those stitches, I am ensuring that it's not really tight, okay? This is very important, you guys. I cannot stress this enough. And now I'll go back to four stitches with my color B. 
those of you out there who laugh at me when I try and do English style, now you aren't laughing, huh? Because I get to do Fair Isle using both hands because I can knit both ways. Yes, my English style might not be as pretty as some of the others out there, but I can continental knit like nobody's business. And when it comes to Fair Isle, it looks really good. I have really great floats and I can hold my yarn in both hands. Okay? All right, I know there are many of you out there who are thinking to yourselves, if I have to hold one strand of yarn in each hand, I'm never gonna be able to make this hat. Well, the good news is you don't have to do it that way. It's just my preferred way and it's a really quick way of doing it. If you need to just hold one strand of yarn as you're working along and then drop that yarn and pick up the new yarn when it's time for that new color, you can do that. And uh, it will make your yarn a little bit tangled up and you'll have to spend some time untangling it as you go along, but it's possible. Let me show you what I mean. All right, I'm going to drop my gray and I will hold my blue in my other hand. So I will do it English style for all of you English knitters out there. And all I'm doing is I dropped the gray. So now I will knit my blue for four colors or four stitches, I'm sorry. And then I will drop my blue, pick up my gray, see that? And then I'll knit for four stitches with my gray pretty easy. Go ahead, complete this entire round. Once we complete this round, we have officially set up our color placement. So now, whenever we are knitting any round from here on out, we will always be knitting with the same color as the stitch we're knitting into. If I'm looking at a blue stitch, I'm going to use a blue yarn to knit it. If I'm looking at a gray stitch, I'm going to use the gray yarn to knit it or whatever color you happen to be using. Does that make sense? So it's very important that this first row is completed with four stitches of each color all the way around, okay? Get done with this round, join me again, and we'll start round three. Okay, as I come up to my last two stitches with my color A, you will notice that by doing the two stitches to start and the two stitches to end, I'm still maintaining four blue stitches, okay? Here's where we do for round three. This is a prime example of how we are going to knit with the same color as the stitch is. So this entire round, we are just knitting and you will knit with the same color as whatever the stitch is. So I am still gonna hold my yarn in two hands so you guys can watch this. But if I'm looking at a blue stitch, I'm knitting it with blue yarn. If I'm looking at a gray stitch, I'm knitting it with gray yarn. And I will do this all the way around for round three. When I get to round four, we have to introduce the cable stitches. So let's finish up with round three, and this is a great way for you to just practice really easy stockinette stitches working in Fair Isle, okay? Don't forget to give your space for your floats, okay? You don't wanna get those too snug. Trust me, I made a hat with this uh, technique and, uh, and it couldn't fit anybody. <laughs> so take your time. Okay, so I just finished my last stitch of my round three. And you can see it's starting to get some really nice color work going on. And it's time that we introduce cables. Now, cables are not difficult, okay? They are really easy. You're just switching the position of stitches within the row and then knitting them essentially out of order. The way you combine cables and fair isle is once you switch those stitches out of order, whatever color the stitch is, you just knit it with that color. Pretty easy, right? We're already doing that. We're already knitting the blues with blues, knitting the gray with gray. So when we do the cable and we switch up where the gray and the blue position is, you still just knit blue with blue, gray with gray, and everything's fine. So let's go ahead and do some cable stitches. We begin round four by slipping our marker and we start off with a two by two LC. So we will use our cable needle. Okay, so this is a cable needle. We will slip these two stitches from the left hand needle and off and we will hold those to the front. 
Now we knit the next two stitches. I'm looking at a gray stitch, so I want to make sure I knit it with gray. So I knit one and two. I take the two stitches I slipped off, place them back onto my left hand needle, and I'm looking at blue stitches, so I knit them with blue. See? Really easy. Once you've completed that one, the next stitch is a two by two RC. So you will take these two stitches from your left hand needle, slip them onto your cable needle, and hold them to the back of the work this time. Now I will knit the next two stitches, which happen to be blue, so I'll knit them with blue. Move the two stitches, I move to the back of the work, back onto my left hand needle. They are gray, so I will knit them with gray. One, oops, notice I have my yarn in the wrong place, so I need to make sure that my blue yarn is in back. Don't put it in front like I just did. There we go, now I can knit it with gray, okay? The next two stitches, I go back to the two by two LC. So I slip these two stitches onto my cable needle, hold to the front, knit these two stitches with gray. Put the stitches from the cable needle back onto my left hand needle. And then knit with blue. You repeat these two cable stitches all the way around this round, and you will notice that you're doing a cable with the yarn held to the front, then you're doing a cable with the yarn held to the back. But as you look at your right hand needle, you will notice that we are still maintaining our four stitches of one color together, based on how we are doing these cable stitches. So our color A is going to look like it's on top of color B, and color B is really gonna be the receding color in this hat. Okay, so get this entire round complete, and join me back here so we can take a look at our work a little bit more closely. As I work my last two stitches on this round, I wanna point out a couple things. First, did you notice that now we have our color B on either side of the stitch marker? By doing those cable stitches, we have now transitioned or moved those stitches into a different place. They're still there, they're just moved into a different place. The cool part here is after round four is complete, all of the stitches are now transitioned into a different place. Yet, we still have four stitches of the same color side by side. For rounds five and six, you are simply going to knit, and you will knit with the same color as the stitch. So let's go ahead, get through rounds five and six, and then we will start round seven, which is another cable round. The completion of the cable rounds is what really creates this honeycomb stitch pattern. So I think it's important that I show you how to do round seven as well. So let's get through rounds five and six and join me back here for round seven. Just a quick reminder, as you're knitting around, make sure to keep those floats nice and loose and only knit with the same color as the stitch you're knitting into. I have just finished round six. I'm ready to begin round seven. Hopefully you are too. Round seven has us begin with a two by two RC. So we will take two stitches from our left hand needle and we will hold those to the back of our work. Now we will knit two stitches from the left hand needle with the same color as the stitch. Move those stitches from the cable needle back to our left hand needle and continue on. Remember to move that yarn back. Don't make a mistake like I did at the start and continue on. Pretty easy so far, right? This is what we did last time. Now we do a two by two LC. So we take these two stitches, hold them to the front, knit two stitches from the left hand needle. Make sure it's the same color as the stitch. And then move these two stitches back to the left hand needle and knit those two stitches. What you will notice is we are going the opposite direction as what we did to start. Last time we started with a two by two LC and then we did a two by two RC. This time we did two by two RC 
and then two by two LC. So that's what's creating this honeycomb pattern. Isn't that neat? You continue on uh, doing these two cable stitches all the way around. Once this round is complete, you're really going to notice the honeycomb stitch pattern. So let's get to the end of this round, take a look at our work, and then we'll discuss the rest of the pattern. Okay, I just finished the last stitch of my round and let's take a look at what our work looks like. You should begin to see the honeycomb stitch pattern and your color A should really look like it's laying on top of your color B in this really cool stitch pattern. If you kind of rotate your work a little bit like this, you will see little holes. You can see where I'm covering up that hole right there. It's perfectly natural. That's the way the cables will work. But as the, the hat gets more and more completed, it will um, be hidden. You won't be able to see any of those holes. But isn't that looking cool so far? It's just so neat how the two colors together really make it look like it's a bed of gray with this really cool stream of blue on top for this example. The inside of my work, or my floats, let's take a look at those. You can see they are nice and loose. I have a lot of stretch and give there because I've been making sure that I keep them nice and spaced out, okay? So that looks really good. And they look really nice and clean. Isn't that neat? After round seven, you work rounds eight and nine, and those are just knit rounds. So as long as you're knitting with the same color as the stitch you're knitting into, you'll still be on target. After that, you will then work a repeat. So you'll go back to round four and then work rounds four through nine a series of times until you're completed with the body of the hat. Now I will give you a heads up. The body of the hat is made rather tall and that's because the crown of the hat has some rapid decreases that happen. So you don't get a lot of extra height by the time you get to the crown. So the hat needs to be able to fit you by the time time it's uh, you you go to complete the decreases for the crown of the hat let's take a look at the sample hat so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about the sample hat here is just a great way to look at everything we have color a which is my fairy tale color color B is sangria and I worked the body of the hat so these full repeats right here all the way up to this point. So at this point, that's when I began the shaping for the crown. So you can see here that the crown only has this little bit extra added. So by the time I got to that point, my hat measures, I'll tell you, let's take a peek here, just about seven inches, okay? So if you follow all of the repeats as written in the pattern, your hat should measure just about seven inches. When you get to the crown, the number of inches from the closing to when you start your decreases is only one inch. So if you know that you like hats that are a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, kind of use those measurements to help you custom fit your hat a little bit more should you choose to, okay? When it's time to get to the crown of the hat, you will do some simple decreases to decrease down for the crown of the hat. When I mean simple decreases, what I'm talking about are just knit two togethers. And what you will notice is when you do these knit two togethers, you will be knitting together the same color of stitches, so that way you are using the same color of yarn. Now obviously I am not to the crown portion on my little sample we've been using, but I can show you the first round of decreases and then I can show you how to do the one one by one RC and the one by one LC, which will be used in the crown on this sample that I have. I feel like showing you these really simple stitches on this little sample, you guys can suspend reality a little bit and use the knowledge I, of, of what I'm showing you to complete your own crown of the hat. That way you don't have to wait like six hours for me to finish the hat before we get to that point. So let me show you how to work the crown of the hat on the sample we've been working together. 
I've gone ahead and worked up a couple more repeats that you have a little bit more to look at here. And we're gonna imagine that this is as tall as I want my hat to be, and we're gonna jump into the crown stitches. I have made the work to the point where you would be when you start your crown. So I've worked around four and around five. I'm getting ready to start around six, which is where we begin our crown. As we work this first round of crown stitches, we are not only going to work knit two togethers, but we are going to transition our stitches from a circular needle to double pointed needles. And we will do that really easily. First, we wanna remove our marker because it's not going to uh, be in effect anymore, okay? You're gonna have to know where the start of your round is based on your tail of your yarn or if you wanna go ahead and take a removable stitch marker and just stick it in the stitch below the stitch that is on your needle, can you see that? That will let you know that that particular row is the start of each round, okay? That will help you out. What I want you to do is go ahead and take your double pointed needle and we will continue on. This is tricky, you guys, because we're working fair isle still, but now we're gonna transition things to double pointed needles. Don't be afraid. The best piece of advice I can give you when it comes to double pointed needles is we're gonna make sure that the first and second stitch on each needle is pulled really, really tight. That will hold your needles in place and keep everything nice and clean. First thing we'll do is work a knit two together. So these two gray stitches are going to be knit together. Really convenient because I'm working two grays so I can knit them with gray. These two stitches are gonna be knit two together. They're blue, so I'll knit them with blue. These two stitches are gonna be knit two together. They're blue, so I'll knit them with blue. Can you see how this is working? These two stitches are gonna be knit two together. They're gray, so I'll knit them with gray. You would work in this method all the way around. You want to try As you work around this round of decreases, transitioning to your double pointed needles, remember, just try and keep them as evenly distributed as possible. And you will also notice that as you are transitioning to the double points, your cable needle, the one that we've been working with all along, is going to gradually become absolutely free. So at the end, we won't be using it at all anymore and we can set it aside. We will only be working with our double pointed needles. Now I am using four needles in play with the fifth needle as a spare. I find it easier to work with that many needles, but if you are somebody who wants to use three needles in play and have a fourth needle as a spare, you can absolutely do that as well. It's, it's entirely up to you. Um, as I come up to the end here, you will notice, da 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 da, that all of my stitches are free. There's my empty needle. I can just set that aside. And as I set this down, all of my stitches are, you know, they're not evenly distributed, but they're they're pretty they're pretty even. I'm I'm comfortable with what I have here. But it's ready to be continued working in the round and using this as my right hand needle and working all the way around just like we've been working before. We're still working with the stitches just like so, just working all the way around. If you didn't get a chance to watch my uh, very first, it's like, what did I call it, my first socks videos using double pointed needles, uh, I highly recommend those if you are not familiar with double points, it, it'll really help you out becoming more comfortable with double pointed needles if you wanna check those out a little bit more. Otherwise, that is the, the first step to making the crown of the hat. We've decreased down to um, half the number of stitches. We're on double pointed needles. 
The next round, you simply just knit. And each color on the, the needles now only has two of each color. So we have two gray, two blue, two gray, two blue. So you would knit all the way around, still maintaining when it's blue, you knit blue, when it's gray, you knit gray. On the following round, you are going to do a cable. And this time, the cables are only going to be working with two stitches. All along, we've been working with cables that have four stitches, right? We move two stitches, then we have two stitches in play, and then we transition those two stitches. So they sort of cross over. Now, because we have decreased the number of stitches we have, and we've decreased how many stitches we have in each color, we are gonna do one by one cables, which means we're only gonna move one stitch to the cable needle, knit the other stitch, and then move the cables needle stitch back. It's really, really, really simple. You've already been doing the motion all along. We're just gonna do it with fewer stitches. So let me show you how that cable stitch is done because beyond that, you will know everything you need to do to make this absolute fantastic, um, capriciously chic hat. So let me show you that cable. I am to where the cable needs to take place right here. And this is where I would move this very first stitch onto my cable needle and I'm gonna hold it to the back. This is a one by one RC. I will now take my spare needle and knit one stitch from my left hand needle. I will take the cable needle and put that stitch back onto my left hand needle and then knit that stitch with the correct color yarn. That's it. The next stitch is a one by one LC. So we take this stitch right here, hold it to the front, knit the next stitch on my left hand needle, move this stitch back to my left hand needle, and then knit that stitch. See that? And the reason I included that cable stitch is just to try and maintain the honeycomb type pattern at the top of the hat. Once you do this full round of the one by one cables, all you're going to do is knit two together, then knit around, then knit two together, and then finish off. And when you finish off, you will be sure that you need to cut both strands of yarn, leaving a good amount of yarn, thread it through the open stitches you have remaining, pull it like a drawstring, and then weave in your ends. That's it. So by this point, you know everything you need to know to complete this really great capriciously chic hat. Hopefully you will enjoy making this as much as I did. Um, I know that there are a lot of color combinations you can combine for this really great hat. I can't wait to see which ones you choose. Um, just one little tip, if you find that you're knitting the body of the hat and it's a little bit more snug than what you want it to be, you could always go up two needle sizes instead of just one needle size from the brim. That'll make it loosen up a little bit more. So that's a tip for me to you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you will give it a thumbs up and uh, come back here for more videos on knitting and crochet and general crafts. I'm Marley Bird and this is the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Thanks. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.